Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things everything. I'm Jerry, Max and Terry are here, and uh, it is time for another another edition of Player Scenarios. The segment where we submit a category, and then we uh, select the player that best fits that category. So, last week we did most likely to be an uh, action movie star, uh, as far as, in, in, and they have to be a current Everton player. Uh, in the future we'll do classic versions of these, and we'll have a much bigger pool from which to, to uh -huh. choose. All right. <laughs> so, we are going to start with the Everton player that is most likely to go into politics. Who, who are our politicians on the squad? Uh, Terry, would you like to start us off? Um, uh, I'm going to say Jagielka. It was likely to is the most likely because he tends to manage to use a lot of words to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, probably Jaggy Elker. He seems quite level-headed, quite, <clears throat> quite honest, which is what you're meant to be for a politician. Let's let's no no laughing at the back there. Um, <laughs> and the least likely, um, probably Cheng Tosin. If you saw what he did when uh, someone got near his family at an international game and he started. Yeah. And motions across his throat <laughs> at the crowd, like <laughs> they got a little bit, a little bit of a cooler head probably needed to uh, to be in politics than that. Hi, Max. What do you think, man? Right, I've gone the the most likely to get into politics. I've gone for Seamus Coleman. You know, ground grounded, level headed, and he shoots from the hip at what he says. You know, straight talking, and I think that's what that's what missing from the world of politics. In this current era and culture, but um, l least likely, I, I went for for Tom Davies because I think he's just he, he's too 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 cool for all that politics <laughs> work. And he, you know, you see him playing a game of one bounce and skateboarding down Bold Street, and that, I don't think he's got any time for that nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. All right. So uh, most likely to be a politician, uh, I've gone with Terry on this and said. Uh, Said the, the old Jags, uh, mainly just because it seems like that's what he's doing. He, I think, feel like that's what he considers his role as captain. You know what I mean? I feel like that's yeah. the way he considers captain. You know, um, it's strange. I feel like he approaches captain a very different way than Seamus Coleman would, than uh, Pickford would. Than, you know, a lot of these players that I think we associate with, hey, they'd be a good captain. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. He just seems like he's... That's what he's doing. He's just sort of trying to please everybody with his answers, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so the worst is the player I think w that would have a hard time hiding his feelings from anything, uh, and I've gone with Mo Besic. Uh, <laughs> oh, I should have thought of that one. I just, That's a good one. I just feel like he would not mess around, you know. Somebody's asking him questions, and he just stare people down. I would love to see it. I would love to see him in a debate or something. Give the, give me that, all right? He would not have a lot of words. Not a lot of words, all right? <laughs> all right. Uh, so, next. Which Everton player uh, would make the best pundit? All right? The best football pundit, all right? Max, you want to you wanna start off? I've got, well, I've gone with two of the old guard. My, my first choice was Leighton Baines, but then I kind of thought, you know, Jag Elka kind of fits in that bracket very nicely. And, you know, two very articulate people who I think are very capable of analysing the game, very level-headed and know the ins and outs of what it means to be a player. And I think they'd be able to conduct themselves right and get straight to the point of what they have to say. Um, who have I put down for least likely? Oh, least likely. I put Jordan Pickford, and me one key motivator in this choice is I don't know if you saw it, but I know it. I know it did the rounds on Twitter. He's doing an um, he's doing a post match interview following the the shootout against Colombia for England, and just completely on camera, not off camera. Like it, so, obviously it's factored in. He's not the best with timings. He's just gone. Have I got doping? Right on camera, asked if he's doing doping control. So I just thought, you know, if you stick him in a studio uh, and, you know, <laughs> get him suited and booted and, you know, he's got to be on key with everything he says, I just don't think he'd be up for the task. <laughs> that, I didn't know about that. That's 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Terry, what do you got? Um, most likely, I've gone for Theo Walcott. Um, I was this close to he, picking him, man. This close. <laughs> you watch any interviews with him or anything? He's, I mean, Jerry probably didn't see it, but this guy did a special um, in the middle of the season for the derby where he did an, um, a, a cab ride around Liverpool with yeah. uh, Play Chamberlain because they both came from Arsenal in the same year, and he you know presents himself quite well. He was quite eloquent. He was quite articulate. You could I can imagine him sitting on uh, in, on match of the day in a shirt and pants next to Alan Shearer and like talking about each game. I can imagine that. I think he'd be a good pundit. Although Jaggy Elker, I think, will be a pundit. Whether it's I don't know where, but he started he started doing a little bit of it um, on BN Sport, hasn't he? With um, Keys and Gray, he was doing that in the World Cup. The least likely is Yannick Balassi, because if you watch any Instagram stories of his, or anything where he is talking, there is no way anyone would pay him to talk. You cannot <laughs> a word he's saying. He's got that real London slang way of speaking, and it just it just wouldn't work on TV. Maybe on Arsenal fan TV it might, but not on. Not on <laughs> Not on professional TV. I can't. I couldn't see Yannick Bellassi being a very good pundit. All right. Uh, so uh, my pundit, I, I for some reason I was thinking this would be in like almost any country, not necessarily like a Premier League pundit. So this is why I've selected this person, just because I feel like he's he just seems like uh, I don't know. He seems a little bit like a celebrity, to be honest with you, the way he carries himself. Uh, Jink Tosun. I don't know why, but at the I, it, number one, I feel like he speaks m- like multiple languages, and mm. I know his his English is great. Some people uh, had said before they were, weren't sure if he would come to England because he didn't speak English very, very well, but his English was fantastic. Uh, so yeah, I think I think he's the kind of one that would be more in like international matches rather than yeah. Premier League or gosh, it, I don't think MLS could afford him. Uh, but yeah, he's, uh, he's one of those I would actually like. He's just cool. Guy just, yeah. he just seems like a cool guy. I mean, he showed up on like reality shows in Turkey, you know, that's just, <laughs> that's awesome. I think he performed a song like live. It's just crazy. Uh, and my worst is a familiar name because I just couldn't imagine him saying much of anything, uh, yeah, I went with Mo Bessage again. <laughs> just because I feel like he would just be sitting there small-mouthed and then, you know, every once in a while, you know, an expletive would come out or or just <laughs> or he'd scream. You know, he just because, you know, so yeah, that's yeah, anyway. Uh so our last category is uh which Everton player do we think would pull a Shawshank? Be the best mm. at pulling off a prison break. I think some of our players may be more more well suited to that than others. So, Max, do you want to start? Who's our who's our our our, our wily fellow that can break out of prison? Uh, after you know your first two shout, I think Mo Bessic would be far off my lips and hard as nails, and he'd probably be able to handle himself in a prison. But that's not who I've gone for. I, I, I thought obviously prison segregated into wings, and I thought you know who's the best at conducting themselves on the wing. Gone for Theo Walcott, you know, quick as lightning, could get away from anyone that's chasing him. You know, quite small, could hide. I think he's got a brain on him as well, so he'll probably be able to kind of weave his way around and get to know the ins and outs of what to do. So I've gone for Theo Walcott. In terms of who wouldn't be able to cope on the wings, I've gone for Kugo Martina. I don't think that needs much explaining after his performance was at left back. Uh, Doesn't seem to be able to cope on the wings, so I'll leave that one as it is. All right, Terry, what do you got? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, you interpreted uh, that totally different than, than I did. That was, I, I like that. <laughs> um, my one for the most likely, the best at it, would be Adam Ola Luckman because he managed to escape the club when two, <laughs> day, two days prior to his escape, the manager had said that he wasn't going anywhere and then he managed to, oh, I'm actually going to Germany. By then, <laughs> so he, and now he's uh, managed to escape doing any friendlies through it with um, injuries. Um, so I just think he's he's quite adept at getting himself out of places he doesn't want to be. So uh, he's probably my best. And 
in the same vein, I think the worst is Morales because we've been trying to get out, get him out for a long time <laughs> and he keeps getting back in. He's uh, he's been several years we've been trying to see him escape and he's uh, chaining himself to the bars. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, Luckman and Morales. Yeah, what if Morales is protesting something? The fact that he's chained himself down to the club repeatedly. <laughs> uh, so my. Uh, my most likely to break out of prison, uh, I said Idrissa Gay because, number one, I think he's super tough. You know, Number two, he looks, when he's on the field, he's just ridiculously slippery and people never see him coming. You know, And then when you look at photos of him, he always has this look in his eye like he just kind of knows something that you don't. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, there's some kind of like unnatural wisdom beyond his years. He's always just kind of like, you know? <laughs> so, so, yeah, I went with Idrissa Gay. Uh, and my worst is a guy who just seems like the, he has the exact opposite look on his face. Uh, Michael Keane. Uh, <laughs> he's, I, I, because we talked about it before, his kind of inability to adapt and things like that, I feel like prison would be rough for him. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just just labeling him like crazy on these videos. Sorry, Michael, if you watch this, you're probably an awesome guy. It was just tough for you to go to a back three last season, just saying. All right, so uh, I guess uh, that's it for our player scenarios, guys. Uh, yeah, always, always surprises in that segment. We'll keep doing these too because, frankly, they're fun. I like them. Uh, if you uh, like our videos, please subscribe. Uh, getting close to 900. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you want to see these uh, these guys doing uh, the work outside of this, uh, you'll start seeing Terry in the uh, Liverpool Echo fan jury. Boom. Uh, <laughs> that'll be coming up soon as the season starts, so you can uh, check his work out there. And uh, Max has uh, analysis on the Toffee Blues website. He's got a story out there right now on uh, Lucas Digne, our new signing. Uh, yeah, see what he thinks about that. Uh, we're gonna go now. That'll be our it's our final video. Yeah. So uh, until next time, gentlemen. See you later. All right. Take it easy. For everybody else. Bye.